uh, Eye of Dragoons to get rid of his small pesky attack over there. And yeah, so right now, we're, again, we're both macroing up, and I have observers in the base. I'm just waiting for him to push out. Like I'm, I, I'm honestly, that's all I'm waiting for right now. I just want him to push out so then I can engage him in a fight, and that'll be like that'll be good because then with the again Protoss first turn. I said this in almost all my Protoss returns. It comes down to the turns for his push, and when they push, if the Protoss breaks it or not, well, it basically comes down to if the Protoss breaks it or not. If it doesn't, and usually it's not a one by a close margin. It's usually either the turn wins by a lot or the Protoss wins by a lot. The reason for that is because tanks either they attack your enemy units or they splash themselves and if you have zealots to attack the tanks then the tanks will be splashing themselves but if you don't have zealots then the tanks will attack you and that's basically like each tank that's 140 damage difference because 70 damage on your opponent versus 70 damage on yourself it's kind of like a 140 damage difference for each tank so basically it's like a 1000 2000 damage difference in one battle and that's a huge amount or like not even like probably 2000 3000 damage difference in the battle and now as you can see I did see a drop ship over here with my observer so I'm getting a dragoons here but I don't want to see my dragoons because then he's not he's going to run his drop ship I want to kill this drop ship with everything in it and as you can see that drop ship is going to die with everything in it and yeah I, did, I could have had my dragoons down there except if I did that then he would have just ran his drop ship and I wouldn't have gotten anything but here he killed like what a probe probably and he lost to dropship and four vultures which is definitely not worth it so that's really good and now I don't have to worry well I still have to worry about drops but not not uh, in the recent time and now I'm getting my dragoons over here because I'm, I have cannons and that can defend my expansions and uh, if cannons can defend your expansions you really don't need dragoons and I have cannon over here too just because he has drops and if he didn't have dropship I wouldn't have gotten the cannon at my main and now I have zealot leg speed. Uh, I'm getting it, and I so I'm now I'm producing zealots because obviously if you have zealot leg speed, you want zealots to your zealot leg speeds can actually be used. Then, if that yeah, that made sense. Um, okay, yeah. So now I have uh 24 like not 24 like 5 20 15 dragoons, and I have seven uh zealots and. The zealots are pre pretty much the key point in... Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, now he's pushing. The zealots are going to be the key difference here. If I can make the zealots attack his tanks and splash them in. As you can see, he see I have observers over his army, so I can see when he sieges and unsieges. And right now, he seized... Remember, I, I attacked, and then right when I, uh, he seized, I moved back. And then, now he's moving forward again, so now... Uh, he's moving forward and now I want I'm running again because I know he's seized and I lost four dragoons no biggie and uh, well actually that's kind of big but whatever okay now okay now I lost six dragoons which is really big but whatever um, I'm macroing like crazy right now so yeah it's all ending up fair and now as you can see I have a lot of uh, a lot of zealots and zealots with speed are very deadly early game and I really need to I'm waiting for him to unsee so I can move the zealots as you can see I have zealots down at the bottom like my seven zealots are down at the bottom so they can flank him when he, t when he sieges and usually pro people keep their dragoons in the front and okay fuck okay now he saw my zealots so now I'm gonna have to bunch up my armies okay uh, mines are being stupid which is good for me and no, no they're not which is bad for me but uh, the mines almost didn't uh, didn't kill him or they didn't kill me which is was, which should have been a good thing but they ended up not uh they ended up actually hitting me and now i have like what uh 24 units and he has like probably 24 units also and so we're pretty much even right now but he's probably has an advantage because he has map position right now he can maneuver anywhere he wants on the map and i really can't because he has the middle of the python uh basically just contain uh, like he controls it and i I, c I don't have free maneuverability over anything on, on the other hand he does so he's probably in a lead just because of that one fact and now, since I know his push is so friggin' strong, there's only one thing I can do right now. If you ever find yourself uh, not being able to break a trans push, uh, the one thing you can always do is counter. Because look at him. He's pushing and look at his base. He has absolutely no units at his uh, choke or any units to defend. He's constantly sporting this one attack he has up here. And now, as you can see, I'm going to go counter him. And he's probably going to go... Uh, either he's going to defend his own base or he's going to uh, counter or like double counter, whatever the hell you want to call it, me. And... Yeah, now I'm going to attack him, and I have a bunch of zealots over here. I'm waiting for him. I, I don't know what he's going to do right now. It's all his decision. Usually, a protest for turn comes down to what the turn wants to do. The turn can either attack, like, right now he can either force an attack in or d defend his own base. And I'm going to be countering no matter what, because I can't break that push no matter what. And this game's, 
yeah, so right now, I, I want to clear these mines also, because in, just in case he decides to defend his own base, I want to be able to move out. And yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, now he's countering. Okay, so this is going to be like a very big training point in the game. So I'm running all my probes because I definitely don't want to lose these probes. I'm getting everything on top of my ramp because obviously I want to have the ramp advantage. I want to have every sort of ad advantage when I'm defending against this attack and I have a force at his base killing him and he's have a force at my base killing me so this is going to be a very very close game right now we're both killing each other and I'm rerouting all my gateways because I don't want it this is like where every single unit comes in handy and basically I'm trying to rerally everything so all my units uh, survive and I know I'm going to lose my base so basically he's losing his base I'm losing my base it's a very intense game right now I'm basically going to have to just uh, make more gateways at my third expansion because that's the only place I have mining and I need to make more gateways to spend my minerals and I know I still have one expansion mining and right now I'm trying to get up his ramp and when I get up his ramp um, I'll be able to kill more stuff and I need I really need a ramp, ramp advantage and basically every advantage I can get in this situation and I know I'm talking fast I don't know why I just feel like talking fast because lots of shit's happening right now but yeah um, right now as you can see I have DTs and DTs are probably going to be the turning point here if I get, get DTs to kill his uh, his tanks and right now I'm running my uh, probes because I want the shuttle to take carry my probes to my expansion or maybe an island expansion if I can and fuck now he scouted my gateways over here so I'm going to be screwed on that part I can't build gateways over there or I can't like really use that that effectively and I saw his SCVs running so they're probably at his third expansion I'm gonna make my Zella go scout to see if he has his third expansion and as you can see I have DTs and my DTs are just here to do da uh, spare damage whatever they can and fuck he scans really good so that DT didn't do that much and I'm just gathering up more units because I really need to break out of this but I don't have that much units to break out of it but once I can get more then okay now he's a tank over here too so now whatever hopes I had for Dragoons killing that base is gone I guess I still could if I pumped out all of them at once but look the way he's laying his mines it'll be really hard for me to push out and this is a very close game right now I don't know who's gonna win uh, okay now I scouted his third expansion so this expansion is going to die and he has nothing at his main also so his main's completely useless and now I have to kill his third expansion and on the other hand I actually have a lot of units here and so I can break out of this pretty easily probably and now yeah here we go okay this is going to be a turning point in the game I'm attacking him and I'm going to go t uh, try to break out of this if I can break out of this this is going to be pretty much GG and yeah okay here we go now the, the yeah okay I'm going to break out of this definitely yeah I have too many units and he, he says GG and he's going to leave now and you guys might wonder why did he say GG so easily the reason for that is because uh, I I broke out of that. I broke out of that. So basically, I had my main and my natural black, and I had dragoons over here killing him. So basically, there is no way for him to defend his own expansions, and I had two expansions ready to mine after this. And I had, uh, keep in mind, I still had my probes. So, and I'm not gonna have a post game commentary on his part because he left right away. But yeah, this is pretty much the whole game. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, look forward to game hundred. I'll keep you guys in suspense till game hundred comes out. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace out, guys.